Okay, Mr. Mayor, CEO, Mr. Doyle, councillors, thank you for giving the public this forum and the invitation to be a speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming tonight. My name is Marilyn, I live in Brisbane, I am retired, but I worked as a medical laboratory scientist for over 30 years. I started researching fluoridation after my sister moved to fluoridated towns hall and quickly developed severe dermatitis. Now the chemicals used for fluoridation, sodium fluorosilicate, about 11 tonnes of that added to Mackay's drinking water every year. Sodium fluoride, about a tonne added to Serena's drinking water, plus a bit more at Marion and Marani. The chemicals come from China, Shanghai, Mintchem Development Company. The silico fluoride does not occur in nature. It is created from the fluoride gases captured in the wet pollution scrubbers of the smokestacks of phosphate fertiliser plants. The chemicals are not pharmaceutical grade as in toothpaste. Heavy metal contaminants are allowed. Queensland Health's Code of Practice allows up to 590 milligrams of arsenic and lead, 120 milligrams of cadmium and 60 milligrams of mercury in every kilogram of sodium fluorosilicate added to drinking water. Bottom line, every year Mackay ratepayers have to pay for council to buy 12 tonnes of fluoride chemicals that have been imported from China and have been created from the toxic waste of the Chinese fertiliser industry. One litre of Mackay's fluoridated water, drinking water contains 0.7 milligrams of fluoride ions. One dissolved Colgate fluoride tablet gives 0.25 milligrams of fluoride ions. So every litre of Mackay's fluoridated drinking water has almost as much as the fluoride you'd get from three fluoride tablets, 0.7 milligrams versus 0.75 milligrams. Now, if you look at Colgate's label, the recommended dose for kids up to four is one tablet a day. Yet, if three-year-old drinks one litre, that's four standard glasses of Mackay's fluoridated drinking water, they're getting almost as much fluoride as in three fluoride tablets. Plus, on top of that, they're going to get any fluoride from uh, swallowed toothpaste and from uh, processed foods. Now, most countries in the world don't do water fluoridation. 95% of the world's population, 97% of Western Europe. But four countries in Europe do allow the sale of fluoridated salt for voluntary purchase. World Health, oh, sorry, World Health Organization's child dental data shows unfluoridated countries have similar or even less tooth decay than the few heavily fluoridated countries. Child tooth decay has been coming down the same in fluoridated countries and non-fluoridated countries alike over the last 40 years down to now only about one tooth with decay at age 12. And this is probably because of um, fluoride toothpaste. World trends show the big picture for child tooth decay, sorry. Fluoridation is mass medication. When fluoride chemicals are added to drinking water, it is done with the deliberate intention of trying to have a therapeutic effect on part of the human body, the teeth. Chlorination is to treat water and make it safe to drink. Fluoridation is to treat people. Mass medication violates two principles of, informed, of medical ethics, the principle of informed consent and the principle of controlled dose. Now, the dose is uncontrolled. You can control the fluoride concentration in the water, but you can't control how much water people drink. And high fluoride intake groups include healthy people who just drink a lot of water, labourers and athletes, people with diabetes and kidney disease, heavy tea drinkers and bottle-fed babies because when formula is mixed with fluoridated water, it has at least 100 times more fluoride than breast milk. Fluoride is not a proven nutrient. There is no such thing as a fluoride deficiency. Fluoride is nothing like folic acid, iodine and vitamin B1 added to food. These are proven vitamins and they serve to prevent a deficiency. There is not one single process within the human body that needs fluoride to function properly. There is no evidence that fluoride is an essential nutrient that needs to be swallowed. On the other hand, there are biological components and processes potentially harmed by fluoride. For example, fluoride inhibits enzymes and switches on G proteins, etc. To date, there are 50 human studies that have found elevated fluoride exposure associated with reduced IQ. And many of these studies have only modestly elevated fluoride exposures. 
39 animal studies have found fluoride exposure impairs the learning and memory capacity of animals, and all references are at fluoridealert.org. In 2014, Lancet published a paper by Harvard researchers classifying fluoride as a developmental neurotoxin, meaning fluoride can harm children's developing brains. And this followed a 2012 meta-analysis of 27 human studies by Harvard researchers comparing the IQs of children with high and lower exposures to natural fluoride. It found an average drop of seven IQ points, and many of the high fluoride concentrations were only two to four times that used in Australian water. If you look at the constant fluoride concentrations in the column with the arrow, these are just some of the studies with only modestly raised concentrations that found lowered IQs. Now, none of the included studies was perfect. No study ever is. But surely the findings should sound warning bells. It does to everyone else, apparently, but not to the NHMRC, because the NHMRC today released a review that I'm actually quite shocked about. Um, they've just basically dismissed this huge body of, of evidence linking fluoride exposure to lowering of IQ, and they reference one extremely poor study from, from New Zealand, a study by Jonathan Broadbent, he's a dentist and he's a fluoride um, promoter, and they looked at 900 kids in Dunedin, which was fluoridated, about 99 kids in the satellite suburb, which didn't have fluoride in the water, it was ball water. And, but there was 139 kids were taking fluoride tablets. Well, who would be the ones taking the fluoride tablets? The ones in the fluoridated area or the non-fluoridated area? There was no control. It was very poor. There was 15 confounders that he listed. He only um, accounted for four of them, and some of those were very poorly done. And not only that, the water in the satellite suburb was the most corrosive water in New Zealand, so, and it was known to leach copper out of the plumbing and very highly likely to have leached lead out too. He had the results for lead and maternal IQ, but they were some of the ones he didn't um, account for, even though he'd criticised other studies for not taking these into account. Um, Philip Crangeen is a well-credentialed scientist and one of the lead researchers of that 2012 Harvard study, and he stated that, I believe neurotoxicity is a crucial potential effect of fluoride exposure during early life. Now, I think he would be absolutely appalled at what, and his researchers, at what the NHMRC has done. Last year, a landmark study found higher rates of water fluoridation in the USA associated with higher rates of medically diagnosed ADHD, even after controlling for socioeconomic status. The authors wrote, fluoride can easily cross the placenta, accumulate in the infant brain, and easily exert neurotoxic effects. There's a dearth of research in this area, and more needs to be done urgently. The NH NHMRC has apparently just ignored this study. In 2006, the US National Research Council, NRC, published their review, Fluoride in Drinking Water, a review of EPA's scientific standards. Now, the primary remit of this review was to determine if four milligrams per litre natural fluoride could cause crippling skeletal fluorosis. They determined it could, but they also examined a lot of research in fluoride at much lower concentrations. For example, this is one animal study that was included in the in 2006 NRC. Um, this 99 study by Varna et al. They gave rats one milligram per litre fluoridated water for one year. The exposed animals had kidney damage, brain damage, a greater uptake of aluminium into the brain, and beta amyloid deposits thought to be characteristic of Alzheimer's disease. Chapter by chapter, the NRC 2006 found fluoride can damage the teeth, damage the bone, damage the brain, and may cause osteosarcoma. The NRC did an exposure analysis and found that some people are already exceeding safe levels for some endpoints when drinking water at one milligram per litre. The NRC committee unanimously agreed that under certain conditions, fluoride could weaken bone and increase the risk of fractures. Scientific American reported on this and showed how fluoride can weaken bone. Back in 2006, the NRC had reported it is apparent that fluorides have the ability to interfere with functions of the brain. They also acknowledged there was several lines of information that indicate an effect of fluoride exposure on thyroid function. Last year, a study of nearly 8,000 UK medical practices 
found that if there was more than 0.3 milligrams of fluoride in drinking water, the risk of underactive thyroid rose by 30 per cent, and also hyperthyroidism rates were nearly double in fluoridated regions compared to non-fluoridated regions. And apparently the NHMRC has ignored this study too. Back in the 40s and 50s, fluoride had been used by European and South American doctors to reduce thyroid activity in patients with overactive thyroid. The doses used 2.3 milligrams to 4.5 milligrams per day may be currently exceeded by those drinking tea or more than two to three litres of water per day. Ingested fluoride causes dental fluorosis in children. Spotted, marked, pitted, hypomineralised, imperfectly formed tooth enamel. In the 2007 New South Wales Child Dental Survey, a quarter of kids, 11 to 12 year olds, in fluoridated New South Aerials had some level of fluorosis. Now, fluorosis is not just a cosmetic effect, it is also damage to tooth enamel. Fluoride sensitivity has been proven. It was proven in the Netherlands in the 1970s when a Dr. Hans Muhlenberg led a team of 12 medical doctors in double blind trials using fluoridated bottled water. The, found, the study found up to 5% of people had allergic type reactions and some symptoms were skin rashes, dermatitis, gut pains, migraines, mouth ulcers. After this double blind trial, fluoridation ceased in the Netherlands. In 2006, a study by Basson et al. that had come out of Harvard Dental School linked osteosarcoma to, um, to teenage boys. Osteosarcoma is a rare primary bone cancer and most prevalent in teenage boys. And this study found that boys had been exposed to fluoridated water around the time of the mid-childhood growth spurt had a five to seven times greater risk of developing osteosarcoma by the time they were 20. The relationship was age and sex specific. A link was found in boys, but not in girls. More re research needs to be done, but the findings, age-related fluoride exposure, greater risk of osteosarcoma, still stand and have not been refuted. Only 20 years ago, it was discovered the pineal gland in the center of the brain is the major site of fluoride accumulation. And the research at the time indicated that fluoride accumulating in the pineal can reduce that gland's synthesis of melatonin. And melatonin is a hormone that regulates the onset of puberty. And there's no Australian research on this issue. The NHMRC acknowledges that people with kidney impairment, kidney disease, have a lower margin of safety for fluoride intake and may retain three times as much fluoride. But even though the NHMRC was supposed to investigate cumulative effects for their 2007 review, they didn't. This issue is still to be investigated. In 1999 and 2001, the CDC acknowledged that fluoride's predominant effect is topical. It works on the outside of the tooth. We have fluoride toothpaste. Why swallow fluoride? In 2000, the American minutes, Dental Association acknowledged that fluoride works topical. Topically. And they also acknowledge that tooth enamel with higher levels of fluoride does not withstand decay acid any better than enamel with lower levels of fluoride. I'll just flick through a couple. Uh, in 2009, when the Queensland government started forcing fluoridation on us, the government was telling us Queenslanders have the worst teeth in Australia, yet they must have known from the 2004 National Adult Survey that adults in three fluoridate stops had more tooth decay than Queen ad Queensland adults did. In 2005, the Cochrane Review published a review on fluoridation. Now, these are considered the gold standard in reviews of medical evidence. Bottom line, the Cochrane Review was less than flattery. They found most of the studies underpinning fluoridation had a high risk of bias. While they said data indicated fluoridation reduced tooth decay, it was unclear whether this was currently applicable, as most of the studies were done before fluoridated toothpaste was available. Yeah, Newsweek did a really good article. Unfortunately, fluoridation is often promoted using shocking, frightening photos of severe baby bottle tooth decay. It's quite misleading to do this because fluoridated water does not prevent baby bottle tooth decay. And young kids in fluoridated areas like Sydney also have severe tooth decay. But there is an answer to this and Queensland University have found it. The university did a project where they recruited a thousand families in the Logan Bay Desert area. They gave new mums or about to be mums prenatal education on diet and oral health advice, and they had dramatic, dramatic effects. You know, they reduced tooth decay down from 23% of toddlers down to 7% with follow-up um, phone calls and down to 2% with uh, follow-up home visits. It was dramatic. This is the way to go, the ethical way to go, education, not medication. And Queensland Health needs to implement this and widely. 
Um, endorsements, this is what I think about endorsements. They're not marketing, they're science, and they carry no liability. Use the precautionary principle, and this is the winner of the uh, Nobel Prize Medicine in 2000, and this is what he said. Fluoridation is against all principles of modern pharmacology. It's really obsolete. Those nations that are still using it should feel ashamed of themselves. It's against science. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Marilyn. Ah, can I have a drink of non-fluoridated water now? <laughs>